Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to use the ideal gas law to calculate gas density. All right, now we've talked about density uh, a lot of times in chemistry, and you should know by now what the concept of density is, but here's just a 10 second reminder of what, what density really is. It's a measure of how much mass a, a something has compared to how much volume it occupies. So, you know, marshmallows have a lower density than rocks because for the same size, for the same volume, the marshmallow is going to have less mass. So mass per unit volume, that's what density is. Now, if you write that down in terms of an equation, the density D, you should know by now, is equal to mass over the volume. So we can say M over V is typically how you'll write that. And the units for density that you can use, and typically that you'll see, uh, you might see grams per liter, right? That's mass per unit volume. You might see grams per milliliter, uh, and so on. I could write down tons of different ones. I mean, I could have kilograms per milliliter. I could have kilograms per cubic centimeter, because a cubic centimeter is also a measure of volume. So there's lots of different ways to write density, but typically in chemistry, you'll probably see grams per liter or grams per milliliter uh, in general. So this is the general way, the granddaddy way of calculating the density of an object. You have to know what the mass is, and you have to know how large in, in physical space that sample contains, then you, uh, then you can calculate the density. Now, there's a special case that's a little easier to calculate than this. At STP, remember, STP is standard temperature and pressure. That's one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. At standard temperature and pressure, if you have a gas at standard uh, temperature and pressure, the density of that gas at STP, at STP, is very interesting. You can simplify the calculation. You can take its molar mass and divide by 22.4, and that'll also give you the density. And I'm going to show you how, but just to remind you, the thing I have on top here, capital M, this is the molar mass of the gas. So this is grams per mole, right? So if you have CH4 gas, you calculate using the periodic table, uh, one carbon atom, CH4, so four hydrogen atoms, get all the masses, add them together, you're gonna get the molar mass of that gas, CH4, and that will be capital M. So just from looking at the periodic table, you can get this molar mass, and at standard temperature and pressure, you just take that number that you get, and you divide by 22.4, boom, that's gonna be your uh, density here. I want to explain why this is the case. Uh, but it is important, so I'm going to kind of circle this, right, because it's something that you'll use to solve some problems. And I'm going to circle this, too, because this is the general uh, concept of what density is, and, and it's very important as well. But let's focus for just a split second why this works. Why can you take the molar mass and divide by 22.4? Because, remember, at STP, one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters in volume. That's what it is at STP. And we talked about why that's the case. It comes from Avogadro's law. We talked about it a long time ago. But one mole of gas is 22.4 uh, liters. So if I were to actually calculate the density of any gas at STP, the density is going to equal the, uh, well, what we're claiming, what we're claiming is you can write it as capital M over 22.4. Well, the reason this works is because when you think about it, Capital M is grams per mole. That's what capital M is. That's what molar mass is, okay? And on the bottom here, the 22.4 comes from this, this rule here, 22.4 uh, liters. And so what this is basically saying is uh, 